The gainer and stereo expander effects make the panning, volume and width parameters from the pre-mixer available within these devices, with a few useful expansions. This means that these fundamental aspects of an audio signal can be controlled from anywhere within an effect chain. The gainer provides sliders to adjust the volume and panning of the audio signal, just as the pre- and post-mixer devices do. The volume slider is different though, being weighted more to raising the volume than lowering it. The top value is 12 dB instead of 3, while the 0 dB level is set at one quarter of the full range, compared to the premixer where it's at three quarters. An addition here are the inverse buttons, which can be used to correct phasing issues in the audio signal by inverting the phase of each stereo channel separately. If you're unfamiliar with what phase means with regards to an audio signal, then just take a look at a sample. The sound's volume level can be above or below the centre, representing positive and negative phase. This has implications when mixing sounds together, such as during the creation of music, but that's a lengthy topic that we won't go into here. Just keep in mind that this is what's being affected when an audio signal travels through an effect chain and the phasing is changed. By a device such as the Stereo Expander. The surround parameter is the same as the premixer's width parameter. Increasing the value increases a phasing inversion effect that's applied to the left stereo channel, though it's not applied equally across the frequency spectrum. At 100%, very high frequencies are completely inverted, while lower frequencies are less affected. The lower the frequency, the weaker the phase inversion is. This process creates a kind of spatial widening that can be useful to fill out a sound within the stereo field. Though at higher values, it tends to feel enclosed, boxed in. It's worth noting that since this effect relies on playing the commonalities of the left and right channels against each other, it has no effect on stereo signals where there are no commonalities. However, this makes it very effective for mono signals, where the left and right channels are identical. Conversely, the expand parameter will have no effect on a mono signal since it works by enhancing or reducing the differences between the left and right channels.
it can be difficult to grasp exactly what this means from just an explanation. So check out this series of rendered waveforms that demonstrate it visually. The mono mix option defines which stereo channel is retained when the expand parameter's value is below zero. L plus R uses the average of both channels. Most effects don't provide the ability to adjust their input or output volume. So the gainer is an excellent tool for changing this between other devices in the chain. Also, since the post mixer is for making final adjustments to the mix of a track, it cannot be automated. So inserting a gainer as the final effect allows you to make these changes during a song's playback. A common use for this is in the master track, where you can automate the entire mix to fade the song in and out. <laughs> 